everything, really in this gospel, it was designed to everything to begin with the Father. I mean, really, if, if, if the Lord had it his way, you'd be born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, your knee would be healed, and he would begin an, he would begin an immediate an immediate training, teaching, and equipping to, for reconciliation to the Father. If the churches would move into that element and dimension, as soon as someone's born again, before you fill them with a lot of religion, you begin teaching them. You're a three-part being. We're going to teach you how to move in the Spirit. We're going to teach you how to move through the Word. We're going to move through the imagery of the Word. You're going to learn how to move in through the door. You're going to move into the grace of God, and you're going to move into the rest of God. You're going to move into reconciliation with the Father, because everything begins with the Father. Because he has to remove what Sharon was talking about, the orphan spirit. He has to transform that. He can't just pluck that tree up until he has another one to plant it with. Because I remember the, when, the, when the father, back in October last year, began introducing me strongly to his continuous love. That's when, I mean, I, I, I spent a whole month in that love. I thought, well, I'm just going to live in this blissful glory all, the, all my life. But after about a month, he started working on things. But he accepted me freely, amen? But then he'd just pull things out. When the Father gets ready, he'll just pull whole trees out. It doesn't make you perfect, but he'll pull whole trees that he can't pull otherwise. And when he does, he lays his love in there so deep. And we went through six months of that. Just amazing transformation. Then he began to introduce me to where we are now, um, to the aspect of kingdom transference, prayer, the way it was designed to be from the beginning, the mysteries of kingdom transference, the mysteries of answered prayer. There's nothing too large for God. Amen. And in reality, if you get the understanding of the mystery of the kingdom, you do not have to. If God told you to believe God for something that cost $10 million out there, you do not have to have $10 million faith. And that's what people miss about this they think they got to have 10 million dollar faith out there you don't need 10 million dollar faith in fact you don't need faith for the whole at all he's not going to begin you with the whole the whole is going to grow in you it's going to grow up in you amen you have to have faith that works like the grain of a mustard seed or say like this the kind of faith that gets the people out of the wheelchair that have been in there for 30, 40 years. That kind of faith. You don't have to have faith for that. You have to have faith for the seed that's going to produce that. Amen? I, I wanted to get into that again tonight as I was meditating. Just an amazing, amazing day. But Sharon said something very important. If, if, until we learn focus, until we understand kingdom focus, Listen, the enemy will fight you in ways that you can't even imagine. But the higher level he's fight you is distractions. He will not come there with a pitchfork and horns on his head and said, I'm here to steal you. He'll come in ways to realign you, to shift your focus into something good but not best. Especially when you get on to something big with God the way he does it, sometimes he'll just try to plow into you. But if you're tough and you've got armor around you and he can't plow into you, he's going to come and try to divert you away by diverting your focus away. And that's how he keeps us. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me the other day. In fact, he said it in prayer yesterday. He said, the reason why a lot of my people do not receive from heaven is they don't stay with it. They don't stay with it long enough for it to actually manifest sometimes you actually may have even conceived you may have came into an encounter where you conceived a promise but he didn't stay with it he didn't know what to do with it and how to stay with it you lose and the enemy will come in and steal that up out of your garden before it's brought into fruition i'm going to i'm going to try to share some of this tonight of how to how to stay everyone say stay 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 with it Stay with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is the most glorious time. A lot of things about the kingdom, when they're working on the inside, not everybody can see it. But every day you're having these incredible experiences with God, but you can't see it yet because it's growing on the inside. This is a phenomenal time in the Lord. It's a wonderful time. And I'm going to share some of this tonight. So uh, just, just to go back a little bit to John 14. In fact, 
before I go to John 14, I want you to go to Mark 11. Go to Mark. You got to have your Bibles tonight. Lily goes, you want notes? I said, no, I'm not giving notes tonight. No. You can actually have notes after. If you want copies after. Amen. So Mark 11. Glory to God. Now this is huge. Verse 22. He says, have faith. Listen to this. I say, have faith. Lana behave. L Lana's over here. She, she's misbehaving. Lana, raise your hand so everybody knows you're misbehaving here. It's, it's, it's definitely Lana. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's selling the notes. Is that what she was doing? Auctioning my notes off. Yeah. Yeah. You know that they had those money changers right before you got up to the temple. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody got a scourge? <laughs> Lily's, <laughs> Lily's having a good time. Oh, man. Praise God. When y'all through cutting up, Lily, when y'all through cutting over there, I want to finish this message. <laughs> that anointing that was on Sharon, it's lifted. <laughs> it's lifted. Father, bring the anointing back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. Okay, March, March 11th. <laughs> See, March 11th is when I can see. So March 11th, I can't get that out of my, I can't, I can't get that out of my heart. I found out it's one of good friend Michael's birthday on March 11th. So I said, we'll never forget that day forever. Glory to God. So Mark 11, Jesus Andrew said, have, say have faith. Say have faith in God. Now that's a, that scripture's bigger than you can possibly know. It take, it took, it's taken me probably three or four years of processing to realign with God because one of the ways the enemy would work against my faith it was dangle carrots from the world in front of me. And what happened was I'd get, all, I'd get all pregnant with the Word of God, but then I would start looking at ways that God was going to do it. Well, He'll do it this way. He'll do it this way. And sometimes when big carrots are laid out in front of you, you'll say, this has got to be the way He's going to do it. So what you do is attach your faith to that. God bless that so you can bless me. And when you do that, you'll bind the kingdom up. Because whatever you bind the kingdom to, you bind the kingdom to a world event or a system of the world. You'll, whatever you bind on the earth gets bound in heaven. The kingdom, say the kingdom, cometh not by ocular evidence. It cometh not from without. The true kingdom is going to originate from above. It's going to originate within. It's going to come out. But the enemy will try to get your faith attached to something out there. And there's some big things coming. There's global events coming. But the, but the kingdom must birth from within. Amen. You must loose all that and get your faith free. Say, have faith in God. That's a scripture he used to loose me. Have it in God and God alone. He can say, have faith in God and God alone. It's enough. Say, it's enough. Because if you don't have faith in God alone, you put it somewhere else and ask God to help you out on something, you're going to miss the whole thing. Amen? So, he says in verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire. Isn't that amazing? He left it up to you. He didn't put any conditions on that. What things soever you desire. Say, what things soever you desire. When you pray believe that you receive. Okay, so there's going to be an aspect, faith is going to be in every single part of the kingdom. There's not any part of the kingdom, faith's not going to be involved. So you've got to learn to get your life into and upon faith. Amen? It's got to get upon the Word, and it's got to get into faith. Now, there's several aspects of faith for true answered prayer. There's going to be several operations and aspects of faith you need to understand them thoroughly so before that so with that i want you to go over to john 14 see if i had if you had your notes you could run right over there john 14 when the lord began to teach on prayer is an amazing thing because when he be, first began to say in john 14 verse 13 he says whatsoever you ask in my name i'll do now you can't just take that one verse and build the whole gospel off of it because the teaching didn't end in John 14, verse 13. They were in the upper room. John 14, 15, 16, 17 were all one whole teaching. He didn't divide it in chapters. He'd go, okay, now we're going to go to chapter 14. Now we're going to go to chapter 15. He didn't do that. King James did that. That whole teaching was one whole teaching. 
You got to understand it from beginning to end. Amen. Don't stop with one verse because he's he first says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, that's a very important aspect of the operation of answer prayer. Who's going to actually do this? The Lord Jesus is going to do it, but he's not going to do it until you understand how he's going to do it. Amen. He's going to get into how he's going to do it. So he first begins to explore this idea of whatsoever you ask in my name, I will do. All right? Now in chapter 15, I'm going to, you, you guys have been taught this, so we're going we're gonna to move through this so I can get, I can get where I want to get. Amen? I want to get where I want to get and not throw a fit. Amen? Praise God. I'm going to get where I want to get so you don't throw a fit. Praise God. How about that? So John 15, he begins to illustrate the first position of answered prayer. Before faith is utilized to receive from God, faith must be utilized to get into position with God. Amen? It's faith first for position. Say faith for position. Without position, you're not going to receive from the Father. You have to have position. The first position he spoke about he says if say if there are some ifs involved now it's not autopilot it's not automatic there's ifs involved those are some huge ifs everyone say huge you gotta do it like that huge come on Roxanne come on huge you don't want to practice it ready huge see praise God if say if you abide in me. So that was the first position. First position, abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now, these words were speaking of words of union, all right? So that was the first position is to get into him. Get through the door. Learn to acclimate into your position in Christ. Because that was position number one. If you don't get to position number one, you're not going to get to position number two. That's the same thing he spoke in, in, in the Lord's Prayer when he said, when you pray, enter your closet, shut the door. Once you shut the door, you're in a position of Christ or in Christ. Amen. But that's not the only position. You got a second position. Now, oh, I wish you, I would have given you the notes at this point. Oh, got it. Because I want you to see this part. Go to John 16. You really need your Bible on this. If you have your Bibles open it, you need to see this. You're going to see there's a really powerful verse, power scripture. Uh, Carlos has a good handle on this. It's called In That Day. I actually have a teaching called In That Day. How many of you heard that teaching In That Day? Oh, okay. So you've heard the teaching of In That Day. Anybody want to teach that teaching that's In That Day? Well, Carlos could get after it. I know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say In That Day. So what he's going to do in chapter 16, now this is important because he's going to identify this position in chapter 16, but he's going back to what he said in chapter 14. So what's he saying in chapter 16? He says, verse 19, do you inquire among yourselves of that I said in a little while? See, he said something in, 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 in chapter 14, he's, and he's asking, are you inquiring of what I meant when I said that, that you shall not see me, and then again in a little while you'll see me? And then he drops down. Into verse 23, he says, in that day. Say, in that day. That's a big day. You shall ask me nothing. Verily I say to you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father. Now he's going to introduce this concept of asking the Father. What do you ask the Father in my name in that day? Say, in that day. When he's describing in that day, he's actually describing a position that he laid out in chapter 14. Boom. I would say, Boom. So go back to chapter 14, verse 19. This is made a lot easier if I'd have given you the notes. T, praise God. It, that's, that's, it's, it's, whose fault is that? Somebody's fault. Man, I gotta, praise God. So chapter 14. Now, this is good to look at it in your Bible anyway. Look at verse 19. He's, gonna, he, he's speaking of this in chapter 16. But chapter 14 is when he originally said, he says, do you inquire what I was talking about in that day? Because he's saying in that day you're going to ask. But he's going to describe what he meant by in that day because that in that day is a position. Say position. 
It's a position we must obtain if we're going to obtain answered prayer, true answered prayer, kingdom prayer. And I'm not talking about shoelaces either. I'm talking about things that will shift you and your generations. Shift the church into a brand new place. Shift nations and cities. This kind of prayer designed to be answered, but we must understand the position that God's given to us. So in that day, in chapter 14, verse 19, he says, here he goes. He goes, in a little while. He talks about that in chapter 16. He's reverting back to this very, this, this verse right here. He says, yet in a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. You see that? But you're not going to see me with those eyes. The world's not going to see me. I'm going away. But you're going to get born again. And I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, and he's going to teach you how to come to where I am. And you're going to see me. You're going to learn to see without the eyes that are in your forehead. You're going to learn to see me through the eyes of my word. You're going to learn to see me through the eye of faith. You're going to look into where I am. Amen? And then he says, in that day that you learned to see me, at that day, see, in that day, you shall know, say, you shall know, intimately know that I dwell in my Father, and you dwell in me in the Father. And I'm in you. In that day, you're going to know this position because my Holy Spirit is going to teach it to you. I'm going to reveal the Father to you. In that day, that's position number two, by the way. The ones, the first one's in Christ, the second one's in the Father. That is the big position we must obtain if we're going to seek kingdom prayer. Now, he go back to chapter 16 because he's going to say this now. Now, this is big because what... All of this is by faith, by the way. Faith for position before faith to receive. You ready? You have faith for position, faith to ask, faith to receive, faith to perambulate, faith to see. The manifestation. Everyone say faith, 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 faith. And you got to know how to operate in each level. But I'm talking about how to move mountains, big ones, amen, and have fun doing it. Have fun doing it. Since I've been doing this with a father, this has been the most enjoyable experience of my life. If I could just locate you, it wouldn't mean as much to you as it means to me, but the, the way the father does this is just amazing. The way he gets involved, the way he fills your, 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 your prayer life up, because your, your soul will get weak, but when you get in there with a the father and his love, he just picks everything up. It's like every day he picks you all the way back up again, and he picks you all. And so no matter what the enemy's doing to you, no matter what you're seeing, the father's always picking you up and holding you back up, holding that vision back up, holding that prayer back. He just holds you up there in love. It's glorious. You can't fail. That's why love will never fail. See, it'll never fail. All right, so... This position, I'll tell you, this is the focus. This is the compass. If you'll focus, somebody called me the other day and said, all right, tell me exactly what to do. I don't want to run around the next 20 years in religion. I said, fill your compass up with John 14, 15, 16, 17. Listen continuously over and over and over again until your heart is full. And in your heart, your faith will release into what it's full of. Amen. If you're not full, you'll try to release into something. You won't be able to get there. Fill it. Your faith will work a lot better. Amen. You have to be diligent in these things. And you have to be hungry. Listen, the kingdom of God is for the hungry. You've got to be hungry for this. You've had to go around a few mountains in your life to find out what works and what doesn't work. It's like somebody told me one, one time he was kind of a Mr. Know-it-all. He said, I heard you're wanting to believe God for a building. I said, yeah. And he goes, well, let's just pray right now. Father, give him this building. Amen. It's done. You don't have to do anything again. I'm like, dude, please. If your faith worked like that, we wouldn't even need. Everybody would be saved. The whole world would be saved by now. But, but people, you can't simplify things to that level. You have to understand the kingdom is advanced 
It requires a transformation, a training, and an equipping to understand how it works. But once it starts working, it'll work all the time because it works by spiritual law. It doesn't change once we understand how it works. Amen? Ooh. All right, so back to chapter 16. Say, in that day. Verse 20, in that day that you know that you dwell in me and you know that we dwell in the Father. In that day. Oh, I love that day. I'm in that day. Everyone look at your neighbor and say, I'm in that day. I'm in the day that I know where you are, Lord. I'm in the day that I know we dwell in the Father. I'm in the day. Whew. That's, a, that's one you can enter into. I'm in that day. Lord, I'm in that day that I know that I dwell in you and we dwell in the Father. I'm in that day. I see you where you are with the eye of faith. I'm in that day. Glory to God. Whatsoever you ask in my Father's name, he'll give it to you. So you're thinking he'll just give it. Listen, this is where you shift, by the way. You're still moving. Now watch this. Verse 25. These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs parables hidden sayings but the time cometh which is then that day say the time cometh which is in that day when i shall no more speak to you in proverbs i'm giving that ministry to the holy spirit he's going to reveal these words but i will show you plainly the father that word means openly reveal the father say openly reveal once i reveal the father to you at that day say at that day that day's got to come for every one of us. You cannot spend the rest of your life in Christianity and not move into the Father. If you do, we'll operate in orphan spirit. Even if we know the Father loves us, there are many parts of our soul that are still orphaned that has to be completed by the Father himself. Amen. Say, at that day that I've revealed the Father to you, at that day. Say, I'm at that day. Now it's going to shift. You shall ask in my name. They say, you shall ask in my name. Now, that's the day it shifts because you move by faith to that place. Once your faith obtains it, you can get there quite consistently. There are some days that, I'll just be honest with you, I can't make it. But there's not very many days like that because I've just learned to override it. Some days, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little secret here if you want it. You want a secret? I'll give you a secret. There are some days that my mind, and I am so ramped up and amped up, I can't get quiet. I'll just sit there until it's run its course. If you have the time, I'll sit there in the garden. I'll just keep bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back. It'll go off, bring it back. It'll go off, bring it back. You think that I don't struggle with that too? I'll just bring it back, and all of a sudden, I'll just keep doing it. I'm like, I've learned to wait it out. So, huh? Yeah, and I... I just learn to wait it out, wait it out. All of a sudden, it shifts. And all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there doing it, and nothing, nothing's happening. You think nothing's, A lot of people get up and leave, and they think, ah, oh, this is not going to work for me. They get up and leave too early. And all of a sudden, I'll just sit there and wait it out, and all of a sudden, it'll shift in, and i boom, I'm in. Sometimes those days are the greatest days ever. Because once I shift, everything comes under subjection to the rest Get into the garden of lilies. Get into the Father. And the Father and I start perambulating together. And those days are some of the most glorious ever. But it required a submission. It took time. Some days you can go right in. Amen. Those are awesome days too. I tell people if you can go right in, enjoy that. Because it's not going to be every day. It's not going to be like that. Sometimes it's just you. Sometimes we're in the way. Got to get. Brought into submission. That's why the Lord said, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to take up your cross. Because your old man's going to have to go on the cross. Because some days your old man is just not going to willfully let you go in that place. He's got a will of his own. And he's got to bow down. Until he bows, the Father's not going to begin operating with you. The Father does not contend with your old man. Write that down. The Father does not contend with your old man. The Lord himself is not going to bring you into the Father until that old man is bowed. Amen. Say amen. Say at that day. In that day. So, what do we have? We have faith for position number one in Christ. What's the position number two? In the Father. 
Now what happens? Well, that's the position where you get loved. Amen? And that right there, you can sit in that love forever. But God wants to transact with you. It's his nature to transact. He wants to transact big things with you. Now he's got finally someone positioned in him. He's got you positioned in love. You know how to get there on a very consistent basis. Once you learn that position, once that position has been learned, the Father's going to come and transact with you. When he transacts with you at this point, Mark 11 kicks in. This, at this point, John 16, when you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. It's not just a simple request. Now you got faith for this level. Say, well, this seems hard. But listen, what God's going to give you, you wouldn't be able to do in 50 years. What God's going to do for you, you wouldn't make it on your own. What God's going to do for you is way beyond anything you could have ever done. So don't worry about how long it takes. Because you're in advanced study. Listen, there are doctors who will study for 12 years to go out and practice medicine. Why don't we study and understand how this works? And God will shift our generations. The king, I believe the kingdom. I believe it. I do. Because I'm experiencing things right now. But I'm experiencing 18 years of ministry. In 30 years of knowing God, of being able to dwell with Him, His, His love will not allow us to fail. What, that's why the Lord said, if I can get you to the Father, you will not fail. The Father will not fail you because He don't give up on you. Love will never give up on you. As long as you can enter into love, love will continually uphold you in your promise every day. And that's why you won't fail because you're doing it by love. Amen. But if you do it without love, now, there, you, there is a faith that's done without love. I've done it. It's very hard work. Credit, and it's not fun at all because you're just facing circumstantial battles all the time, fighting stuff all the time, speaking to things. But that, that kind of faith, is that's an older model. Amen? There's a new model. Praise God. But it's not new. It's an old thing. But it's a new thing now. Praise God. It's faith that works by love. It's the one the Lord wanted us into. Praise God. It's one that won't fail you when God assigns you something really big. Say big. He said, I want you to believe me for this. You think we could have started with something a little smaller? He said, no, this is good. This is good. I said, Lord, have you looked at my life? He said, that, that doesn't mean anything. I said, he's just a good start, praise God. He goes, we've got to start here because we've got a long way to go, praise God. And he'll assign you something big. Amen? Say big. Now, once he, when, he says, when you ask anything in my name, see, now the Lord's going to get involved with that request. He's going to give you something very big. Say big. Now, here's the key. Go back to Mark, to Mark chapter 11 now. When you pray, believe you receive. Now, you have faith to enter in. But once you're in the Father, you're going to shift now. Still faith, but it's a shifting faith. It's faith to receive. Say faith to receive. He said, believe that you receive. He asked anything in my name. He also said, if you ask anything according to my will, my Father will hear you. And if the Father hears you, it will be done for you. So the will of God is a very important thing. So when you're asking for something in his will, that means he's already sent that to you. Amen. He's already given you the knowledge. See, God will send his word first, like he did to Abraham. But then you bring that promise, that will to him. You bring that word to him. Now, that word hadn't conceived yet. Stay with me. Don't check out. Watch this. So he sends that word to you. How many of you have been carrying a word for a very long time? An uh, unmanifested word. Should Everybody should be raising their hand right now. Okay, that's his will. That's his will. How many of you got a certain word in you that a certain desire and a certain promise that burns greater than any other promise? Raise your hand. That's his will. That's probably what he's going to start you with. Amen. How many of you it's big? Raise your hand. See, he's, we're talking about why does God do that? Because you're his son and God's a big God. He wants to start with big stuff. You can write this down. The Father is not intimidated with big. <laughs> Father God does not get intimidated with big things. Only we do that. All right. So 
So let's say you, you're making it to the love of the Father, and he's, every day you're swimming in the love of God, and you're getting baptized in the love of the Father. Now the Father's going to start you with a desire. He already sent his word to you concerning. All right? You with me? Now what do I do? I bring that desire with that word. It's exactly what I did. I brought that constitution. He said, now I want to start. I hand me that constitution. Literally. He said, open this constitution. I opened it. And we opened it all the way to about right here. He says, okay, we're going to just start with these two or three pages. Is that good enough? I said, yeah, that's fine. Two or three pages. He goes, but I want you to believe me for this. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I said, Lord, have you seen my surroundings? I said, that's pretty big. Say big. That's big. He goes, he goes, yeah, but we're not going to start with big. We're going to start with small. That leads to big. That's what he told me. I said, what? He goes, did I say my kingdom was? Now, listen very carefully, because now you're in receiving phase. Say receiving. You are never going to receive from the father the big. You're going to receive the small that creates the big. Did you get that? The father's not going to give you the big. He's going to give you the small. I'll give it to you in King James Word version. In, in Matthew 13, he said the kingdom is a mystery. Amen. And he talks about how the word of God comes. And then he goes, the kingdom of God is like the grain of what? A mustard seed. Now, mustard seed is not small faith. Because you ever heard those people, all you got to do is have faith. It's as small as a seed and God will move. No, 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 no. Mustard seed faith is not small faith. Mustard seed faith is receiving faith. Say receiving faith. Mustard seed faith is receiving faith. So you're going to move into a receiving faith because the Father is going to give you the seed that's going to produce the big. Amen. So when God says, I want you to believe me for this, and you're thinking, how can I have faith that big? You don't have to have it. He says, can you have faith? Not the size of a seed, but can you have faith to actually receive the seed? Can you have receiving faith? Now, this is why you need love first. Because if you've got love issues, if you've got orphan issues, you won't be able to receive from the Father because you'll be thinking all, the bad, all your stuff, see? It gets in the way. That's why you've got to get into love first. And love clears you out to where the Father loves me. He loves me. I'm his favorite son. He tells me every day I'm his favorite. He does. I am his favorite. Just show of hands, how many of God ever told you that you're his? The gig is up, Father. Anyway, so he says, you're my favorite. All right? So we're in there. I don't have any issues anymore in receiving. So he says, can you believe? Okay, I got this big thing, but it's not going to start with a big. Chris, you got that mustard seed tree? Can you find that? It's not going to start with that big whole tree. But can you believe me to receive the seed that's going to produce that seed, that tree? That's mustard seed faith. That's what he said. When you stand for him and believe, you receive. What's the Father going to give you? He's not asking you to. He's asking you to believe for that. The Father's not going to shove that tree inside you. He doesn't do that. He, understand how the kingdom works. He said, when you stand praying, and believe. When you said, when, and the Lord said, you ask anything in my name, his name is a big thing. Sharon started rolling off some things that were in his name a minute ago. You need to know everything that's in his name. There is a lot of stuff in the name of Jesus. He's blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's all in his name. Mount Hebron's in his name. Your healing's in his name. Generational inheritance is in his name. The nations are in his name. I'll set my king upon the holy hill of Zion. Ask of me, son, the nations for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. It's yours. It's in your name. It's all in his name. Everything you can identify in his name is his will. Amen? So, he takes something, a huge inheritance is in his name. He says, now believe me for that. God's not going to take that tree out of the name of Jesus and shove it in your spirit. Now listen, it has to transfer legally from heaven to earth. It's got to transfer by way of you. If it does transfer by way of you, God is creating illegal transference. He's got to move it through you. Amen. God works in legalities. You're his son. He wants to bring a kingdom that's not of this world into the earth. But he's got to do it legally through you. All right. 
So when you believe that you receive, say receive, he's not going to shove that tree inside of you. However, he's going to grow that tree on the inside of you. What he's going to do, he says, can you believe you can receive that in the way of a seed? So what the Father's going to give you, he's going to draw up the inheritance out of the name of Jesus. And he's going to bring that inheritance into your garden. And he's going to plant it in a conceived manner in your garden. By faith, Sarah received dunamis. How many of you get what I'm saying right now? He gives you, the, that's what the Father gives you. The Father does not manifest that tree. The Lord manifests the tree. The Father gives it to you from his name. Do you, do you understand all that? Because the Lord said, when you pray to the Father, whatsoever you ask in my name, my Father will give it to you, but I will do it for you. But he can't do it until the Father gives it. And your Father's not going to give it until you believe that you receive. Receive what? He's going to send his word to you first. Hey, I want you to believe me for that tree. He's going to send a word to you. Bring that word to the Father. When you're in a love affair with the Father, you can bring it to him every day and say, Father, I believe I receive. I keep this. I, I take it to him every day. I'd hold this in my heart. I said, I, I hold this word you've sent to me. By faith, Sarah received dunamis and she conceived. Mary conceived. I believe that I received. I actually but believe it or not I started this in february i started holding this up to him and i'd hold the image of what he told me to do i had no idea what was going to happen on march 11th it happened i got overshadowed by the holy ghost and his word it conceived the father transferred it what happens there is a literal transference that comes out of the riches and glory into your heart when that transference came, it was like a four-hour experience. It was amazing. All I did, I come out of that door and said, something happened to me today. I don't know what happened, but something happened. Something happened to me. The next day, I'm like, what is in me? And all of a sudden, I was awakening to the fact that not only the Father had transferred that tree in the form of a seed into me, he came with it. Just like he came with the Lord to join him. I and my Father are one, he said. The works that I do is not I do, it's my Father's doing them. You see me, you see the Father. He's dwelling with me. He promised to dwell with you. When he conceived, the Father came with that conception. And then, now get this part. I'm going to close with this. Father's house five. Say, Father's house five. Are you with me on this? This is the mystery of the kingdom. It's huge. It's magnificent. I didn't have to have faith for that tree. It's way too big for me in the beginning. But I did have faith to receive the seed. I said, Father, I received this from you. It, and I, it, it takes faith. I started in February. It happened March 11th. And once that conceived, I knew I could see every single thing he said was happening. Just the way he said it was going to happen. He said, I'm not a man that I can lie. If you'll do it my way, it's going to happen. And he goes, now I want to teach you what to do with the seed that's been put in you. That was the Father. He started coming to dwell. Now, how many of you know, stay with me for a minute. How many of you know that that tree right there, that mustard seed tree, was all compacted into an image in that seed that seed held the full image of that tree inside of it. The apple seed holds the image of the apple tree inside of it. If you dissect it spiritually, the image is all locked into that seed. So when God brought the seed, the whole image came in. God doesn't dwell in the, the Once it came into the heart, the Father doesn't dwell in the seed. He dwells in the image. Are you with me? He explodes that image inside of your garden. So when you start perambulating with him, walking with him, some of you are like, oh, my God, he's out there. So when you, when, when, you, when you start walking with him and dreaming with him, he starts dreaming with you in that seed. And what he does is he unlocks the image of that seed, and he's there with you, loves there with you. And when he does, it explodes on the inside of you on a daily basis, and he starts dreaming with you panoramically 
on the full image. Now what happens is that tree starts growing inside you. It came in as a seed, but as you start dreaming of the Father, He's dreaming every day. He's painting another picture and another picture. And Why is He doing that? Because He's transferring something out of the kingdom that has to come to you first. And as it grows in you, this is where faith and patience is where a lot of people lose it. They don't know how to stay with it. This is where love will hold you in there. When love comes, love will glue you into that thing. Love will every day, even when you get tired, love never tires. That's why I don't operate in my own strength. I'm operating in His. Love will never tire. Every time I can tap into love, love just lifts it all over again. I'll go like two or three days and something's happened. I've got distracted and, and I, oh my God, I've got to get back in there and love will take you right back in there and just whoo, dreaming in it. And the reality of your future is being written on the pages of your spirit. On the canvas of your spirit, the Father is, is painting your literal future and imagery. He's painting. Isn't it glorious? Isn't it glorious? Are you with me? He paints that through love every day. And it's, it's, he's perambulating. He walks with you. And it's like you're there. You're dwelling. You're dreaming in it. Why is he doing that? Because it's going to grow up in you. Why, well, how long does it take? It takes the time to develop that image inside you. That image has to grow from a seed to a tree. Once it comes to full age on the inside of you, it doesn't take linear time to come to full age. Do you understand what I just said? Spiritual time operates very fast. He builds that image to where all of a sudden, watch this, that image gets so strong you're dwelling in love, it's no longer impossible to you. It's no longer big. It seemed big in the beginning. Now it's normal. Now it's why? Because it's dwelling in your heart and your heart's accepted it and it's grown up in your heart and it's removed all the boundaries of what you considered big. It drove all those impossible boundaries out. And all of a sudden, it's a normal part of my day to dwell with the Father in the fullness of what He's called me to do here and believe Him for. It's no longer impossible. In fact, the phase I'm in do now is you're dreaming with the Father. The phase I'm into, I'm getting into this thankfulness, this incredible, it's not manufactured thankfulness. It's thankfulness that's coming from love. It's overwhelming you. The Father's done this for you, overwhelming you. It pours out of you like waters. Uh, thankfulness that's overwhelming you. It's coming from the love of the Father. How can you fail? You can't. The only way I could fail is let go of it. The only way I could fail is allow the enemy to take it from me. Other than that, it's coming. And every other thing I want to believe God for is coming too. And it's coming with you too. That's why it's blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom. It doesn't matter what state the kingdom finds you in. If you understand the laws that govern the transference of the kingdom of God, you can believe God for things that can shift the whole world. When he's done, he's got some pretty big things. Because what I consider big now is normal. And God said, we have bigger projects than this coming. I said, that's fine, God, because I understand it's all coming as a seed anyway. It's going to grow up in me. By the time it's grown in me, what I considered big is no longer big. Now watch this. Here's the glory part. This is what I'm waiting on. So while I've conceived since March 11, I'm not just sitting there doing nothing. Every day is an experience. That's the part you need to know. Even though I'm not telling you what's going on, I'm experiencing this every day. Here's an encounter with this, with this vision. What This thing God's called me to believe for, it's an encounter. Every day is a glorious encounter. The days I get there, the days I get there, and the, uh, the day was awesome. But the days you get, it's just filled with love. It's glorious. Hallelujah. What is he waiting on? He's building it up in your garden. He's growing the kingdom in the garden, in my garden. It's growing. Say, it's growing. What's it waiting on? Till it comes of age. And they can come of age. That tree might take 30 years to come to that level. This tree can take three months, four months, five months. Mothers, you carry a child for nine months. You don't question it. Why do we question the kingdom? Have to carry it for four, five, six, seven, eight months. Why do we question the time it takes for a babe to grow in your womb? Why do we question if it took nine months? Why would we even question that? This is a law of nature. 
I'm prepared until it's there. But I've got a promise. And here's the one I'm into right now. Are you ready for this? Lord, you said if I ask anything in your name, you will do it. I present my garden to you for manifestation. You that have begun a good work in me, Lord, you will complete it. I am not going to manifest this. I am not going to touch it. I'm not tying it to anything in the earth. You will do it. You've begun a good work in me. You'll be faithful to complete it. Faithful. Like Abraham, he says, I'm fully persuaded. I'm weeping and crying, thinking I'm fully persuaded that what you've promised me, Lord, what you sent this word, what conceived, the Father and I have been dwelling in it. I'm fully persuaded that what you promised, you will perform it. You're the author, Lord. You authored it and you will finish it. It needed to be big to make a statement that the kingdom of God is true. And everything else is going to be big too. And God wants this from you and I. He don't want us circling around Christianity for the next 30 years, going to church, doing the Holy Ghost hoopla. But walking out there with no victory in our life. We're far greater than that. But until we understand the dynamics that make this kingdom happen, and we stick with it, say stick with it. This is the part you got to learn. Stay with it. Say stay. Love will help you stay. Without love, you're going to lose it. Love will hold it all together. The Father's love will keep you. Even when you're tired, the Father's love will invigorate that thing. Every time you get in the Father's love, even if you were weary that day, it goes all over again. The Father's love is not conditional to your strength level. Did you hear what I just said? It's not conditional to the doubt of your soul. The Father's love will override all that. Amen? That thing fills you up. To the Father manifested. Isn't that glorious? That is the mystery of the kingdom of God. Let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Whew. The mystery of the sea. Let's all stand. Father, thank you. Whoa. I'm going to go perambulate with the Father tomorrow morning. I have learned, by the way, now this doesn't apply to those of you who definitely got to get up in the mornings and get to work and everything. But those of you who have the time to do it in the morning, I have learned the mornings is the best time. Don't let anything come between you and God. Because you sometimes I get one shot at it. If I mess it up, it's messed up. For that day, I just sometimes know I can't do it today. I got to wait for tomorrow. I know not to get busy. I know not to get distracted because I got to get up the mountain of God. I got to get in there where the Father's dwelling because my future is sitting up inside of me. And I got to get where that is with the Father in order for it to come into the earth. Isn't that glorious? Wow. Father, thank you for the glorious mysteries of the kingdom of God. We're very rich in mysteries, Father. This church may not look like it to somebody who drives by, but we are very rich with revelation. We are very rich with the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And these mysteries will manifest in this hour, in this day, and there is no limit to what you will call us to do. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord says, this is primarily how the white horse will run in the last days. The people of God will blow the limits off. Christianity ceilings will break in this hour. Paradigm shifts. Ceilings will shatter. Generational ceilings will shatter. Generational ceilings, ceilings of the soul, ceilings of the flesh, the strong men will run out of the promised land as this kingdom of God will shatter the ceilings of what they thought possible. Thank you, Father. Faith to enter, faith to access, faith for position, faith to receive, faith to perambulate. Faith for manifestation.